So uh, this is ICMP, Internet Communication Message Protocol. This is uh, excuse uh, me. So can I can? Yes. Uh, yesterday we were supposed to handle a certain question before we start. That is what you had mentioned. Oh, correct, 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 correct. I don't know. So can I be reminded what question was that again? Leonida had asked, I think it was Leonido had asked yes. about uh, creating a thousand hosts. Um, all right, yeah. all right, all right. Yes. There, is it the one for a thousand or the one for two thousand? I can just do one of them and that should give you direction. Mm, you can do for, for one thousand. One thousand. Let me do for one thousand. That should be okay. So let me get my my notepad here. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna do the one for one thousand. So, like I said, guys, uh, subnetting is a very integral part of networking, and so it's important that we get to know what is it. So, what I'm gonna do is that I need to. Uh, I just need to do. Uh, uh, 1024, uh, 12, uh, 256, 128, um, uh, huh, this is 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, 1. I'm doing this. Basically, this is submitting question. Uh, the question was uh, subnet. What is it? Ten dot zero dot zero dot zero. Was it slash what? Slash eight? Yes. Uh, to get one thousand uh, networks. Yeah. So that was the question. So once you get that question, the first thing you're gonna need to do is that you need to. You need to write um, the multiples of two. Okay, two power zero uh, is, is one. Two power one is two. Two power two is four. Power three is eight. Power four is sixteen. Power five is thirty-two. Power six is sixty-four. Power seven is one twenty-eight. Power eight is two fifty-six. Power nine is five twelve. And power ten here. Okay, but 12 is uh, 10.24, all right? So you need to be, you need to be at the rate with um, your, okay, you need to be at par with your multiples of two, because if you don't do that, then it's not going to be uh, well with you. And so, uh, so I'm just doing this multiples of two here. This is six, this is five, this is four, this is three, this is two by two, two by one, and two by zero. All right, so have your multiples of two. Then ask yourself, 1,000 falls between uh, 1024 and 512, all right? Obviously, 512 is less than 1,000. So you take the next one, which is 10, uh, 24 and uh, it is 2 to power 10. It's 2 to power 10, which means for our first step, we're gonna need uh, 10 bits. 10 bits is the answer for the first uh, choice. Then the second step, since we are talking about networks, we're gonna be borrowing. So borrow bits on the subnet mask, which is slash 8, and then find increment. So slash 8. Is equals to what? Slash eight is equals to uh, uh, two five five dot zero dot zero dot zero, and uh, that is one two three four five six seven eight. 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 Correct. All right. So once you write the subnet mask in binary, then we are going to borrow. Remember in borrowing. We borrow from left to right. We borrow 
zeros and convert them to ones. So you're going to be borrowing eight, 10 bits. 10 bits. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those are our 10 bits. Those ones, we're going to convert them to one. So start there. Uh, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Let me just do this. Do this. Okay. So let me just uh, get another column down here. So when we borrow, so we borrow here, and you're going to be having now. Uh, right. Let me just make this like this. All right. So when you borrow, we're going to borrow 10 of them, as we had said. We're going to borrow 10 zeros. And we convert them to ones. OK. So when you do borrowing, we do borrowing, you borrow 10 bits and you converted them to ones right here. And we need to know what is our increment. OK. The increment uh, is going to be what? It's going to be the last one bit here, the so borrowing, and that is 64. 64 is our increment, all right? Then it is on which octet is on the third octet. So the third octet. So the last thing we do is to use the increment, find the network ranges. All right. So use the increment to find the network ranges. We take now the network we are given, which is 10, 0 .0 0. We need to now add 64 to the third um, octet. So we now have this here on the third octet here we add uh, 64 so 64 plus 0 here is 64 we can continue adding and this is funny 64 plus 64 we get 128 we keep on adding on the third octet and uh, 128 plus 64 we know that is 192. Okay. And keep on adding uh, 192 plus 64. We can do that here when you're seeing so that you see something here uh, together with me. So we have 192 plus uh, 64. All right. We know that. Um, 2 plus 4 is 6. 9 plus 2 is actually giving us uh, 15. OK, and we carry 1 and we have 2. So we have 256 and that's already a problem. So if you add 64 plus uh, 192 here, we get 256. You know we can't try 256. What do we do? We're going to write zero here, OK? And we carry one and add one plus zero. And we have our one here. That is very important for you guys to note. OK? So let's find our ranges here. But find our network ranges. Uh, second octet here is beginning with 64. This one ended uh, with 63. Obviously, this is beginning at zero, so and ended at 255. Okay, so the same thing. Uh, this one is 128 here, so here must be 127. And here is going to be 255, as we have done before. Uh, so the next one, this is 192. Is going to be 191. 191. And then here is now, uh, now the third octet has started changing. 
this is one. The number that comes before one is zero here. This is zero. <laughs> the number that comes before zero is what? It's 255. This is zero. The number that comes before zero is 255. You see that there? Yeah. So that's how we do it. And if you are to add another network here, you will actually have um, add here. Because since we're adding on the third octet, we'll add 64 to here. You get 64 here. And obviously this would be zero. Yes, such that once that is zero, we will now have um, here. This is. Um, Obviously, this will be one. And uh, since we already got into one, so if this is one, this must also be one here. Since we already added and we are in one, this is 63. Obviously, this will be, I mean, that's 64. This will be 63. This is zero. This will be 255. So it keeps on changing like that. Yes, moving until you get to the 100 network. So I don't know whether. Do you guys have questions before we talk about ICMP? How to subnet and get these network ranges? Obviously, the new subnet mask here will be slash what? Uh, slash 18, which is uh, 255.255.2. Uh, that's what? 192. Go to zero. That will be slash 18. Questions, guys. So, Wally, uh, maybe. Yes. Uh, a question. Okay. So, when you're told to create a thousand subnets uh, using uh, that range that you've been provided, so there is no uh, like a definite answer. Am I? It's just the ranges they want. <laughs> no. Yeah. It, there's no definite answer here. You just need to tell us the sequence. Can you give us about five of them? Once you can get three, four, five, then we are confident enough that uh, we are confident that if we if you went to a production network, you know how to add the IPs. So we want to need, we want to see how you get the increment and how you are adding the increment. That is the most important thing. All right, thank you. All right, Karibu. Any other questions from the floor, guys? Yeah, submitting is key, and you need to ask all your questions in this class. It's important. Someone? All right, so if that's it's it. You can try now the one for 300, try the one for 20,000. So the one for 20,000. You're going to need to double these guys from 1024. You go to 2048. OK, from 2048. You go to 4096. All right, so keep on moving until you reach to until you reach 20,000 and something. Yeah, keep on doubling that number there and then you'll be good to go. All right, so thank you very much for the answer. Leonida, I hope you are answered if you don't have any question. And um, uh, I'll now request that we move to ICMP. We talk about ICMP very briefly. Yeah. And so ICMP is a very brief chapter, by the way. And we are just going to look for various tools to test network connectivity. And in most cases, there are always only two. There are always only two. Either it's ping, where you ping IP addresses. And ping is actually the short for packet internet grouper. Packet internet grouper. You use it to test end to end connectivity of any two devices and ping you can ping an ip address you can still ping a domain name as we're going to be seeing in a short while and so it is important uh to note that we are going to use just ping and trace route ping and trace route all right so these are the two messaging protocols that you do have so um icmp basically is the, the group where these two protocols belong is the mother of the two protocols. Uh, they help to provide feedback about any issues related to processing of uh, packets within the network. Okay. So we have 
ICMP for version 4 and we have ICMP for IPv6 or version 6. And both of them are used for one, host reachability. Is a device reachable from your device? Uh, or is the destination reachable or unreachable? Or it's service unreachable? Or there's a time exceeded value. And this is this takes us to back to what is called the, the TTL value, the time to live value. So it is important that we do know how to use these two protocols. So like you said, you can test host reachability, and I can just demonstrate that here. I can bring up my command prompt here, and I'm going to ping. I want to ping cisco.com. All right. And you can clearly see that I'm getting replies from that particular web server. This is the cisco.com server. And if you are very keen, ping also tells you the IP address of that server. You can see that here. The IP, and it's a public IP address, 72.163.4.185. So that is uh, cisco.com server. I can ping another server. I can just ping uh, facebook.com. All right. And clearly you can see that we are getting feedback. Okay. We are getting feedback from the Facebook uh, server. And it has its public IP here at 107.132.96.35, which is the public IP of that particular uh, server for Facebook. All right. And you can always look at statistics here. By default, by default, Windows computers, they send uh, for they send for what is called um, echo because ping sends echo request and we get echo replies. So by default, four echo replies are always sent and you get four echo replies. So you can see sent is four and received is four. Okay, and there's a zero uh, uh, percent loss there, and there's a prep, uh, uh, minimum time and average. There's a minimum of 19 milliseconds and 26 milliseconds and the average of that is physically 21 milliseconds so windows computers send four by default and that's why you get four replies but you're not able normally to see the four request but if we're using a software like um a software like wireshark here i'm going to launch my wireshark application i'm using wi-fi so i'm going to just choose that and I'm not gonna want to update now. So let me do a ping again, and you're gonna see what happens here. And I would like you guys to see that as it is happening here. Okay. I want to look uh, some ICMP message there. Let me ping again, and you should be able to see something here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see some ARP that was done there. Let me do it again. You can see ICMP messages there. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to, let me just, let me, let me filter them. ICMP. And you can see them here. Okay. You can now see if you can if you are keen enough, you should be able to see there's an echo re request reply. Request reply. Request reply. The the things that are actually I was actually sending. Okay. And you know, only Wireshark can be able to record all the requests and replies. But without uh, uh, in the command from you only see the replies only. And you can see I was receiving replies from uh, 102, 132, 96, I don't know whether you are keen enough to see that. Uh, 102, uh, Wireshark of course tells us the source IP, 132, 96, here, and it's going to my PC. So those are a, a reply which was coming from the server to my PC, but the request here, request is moving, from my own PC to, to the server. So request was going and reply was coming back. So Wireshark is able to tell you who is the source IP and what is the destination IP. And look at the protocol. It's an ICAP protocol and it's either an echo request 
All of them are ping, but one is an echo re uh, reply, and the other one is an echo request. So powerful, a very great tool for learning. Now, like I had mentioned, you can actually send um, more than four echo requests, and you get more uh, echo requests. So let me say, if I ping, and I want to say dash n for number of nominal, and I put six here, and I say facebook.com. Look at that, look at that. How many replies are we going to get here? We're going to get more replies. We have actually gotten, I had selected the uh, hyphen N and I put six. So I, I was trying to do away with the default four. So I have actually said, I want to send four echo requests and that will give me four echo replies. And you can see my six echo replies are actually here and you can see sent was six here and received was six here and there's a loss of zero that was within 17 milliseconds to 27 averaging to 20 milliseconds here so you can always play around with that you can even ping it because linux operating systems linux operating system then they send infinite ping request or echo request you can also do that, but you must do that with a command here in Windows. I'll need to say ping and um, uh, is it uh, dash I? Uh, and then I, I put what? Put uh, this book.com. Uh, no, it's not that one. There's a uh, yeah, I think it should be T. So ping dash T and I put facebook.com. Yeah. So when I put hyphen T, it now sends them continuously without stopping. All right. It now sends them continuously without stopping. And you can see that this can be uh, in a very good uh, attack like ping of death. I continuously send echo request to the device and I keep on getting replies continuously. And this must not stop until I press Control C and then it's going to stop. Linux actually does that. Linux does not send default of four. I was thinking if I can get a Linux, uh, if I can get uh, my Linux, uh, my Linux um, tool here, I can grab. One of the Linux. Uh, let me look at this. Let me see this. Okay. Let me just. Um, okay. I can. Uh, yeah. Let me bring my Aura virtual Oracle box here. Oracle virtual box here. I don't know that you guys can see it. I'm not so sure. All right, yeah. So my Oracle virtual box is here. And let me bring up one of my operating systems here. I can bring up, um, I can bring up what? Let me bring up, uh, let me bring up Kali, Kali Linux, okay? Uh, uh, yeah, let me bring up Kali Linux. Oh, just Kali, maybe. Let me do Kali, 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 Kali Linux. Okay, let me start Kali Linux. So these are my virtual machines, CCNP, Cyber Ops, Security Onion, Cyber Ops Workstations, Ubuntu, Linux itself. So let me just start this uh, up here. And um, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, so it's just starting. It's going to start in a few minutes here. Yeah, and my username, of course, is Kali. And my password is that. All right, so this is my Kali Linux operating system. And I can start the. Um, all right, so I can start my command, my terminal here. And uh, can I ping google.com? If you could be able to accept, look at that. Look at this, it doesn't stop, you know, just like. When we did the other one in Windows, you know, 
Yeah, it, this doesn't stop, just like we saw it in Windows. So Linux by default sends continuous echo request and you're getting the replies uh, as you can see there. You keep on getting replies until you stop this with control C and you're able to do that. So uh, 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 Kali Linux, unlike Windows, um, uh, it is sending echo requests to the internet from this virtual machine here. And, you know, it doesn't stop just, uh, and we saw that in Windows as well. So those are echo requests there. And um, we have seen that. So use basically for testing host reachability by sending echo requests and getting echo reapply. So ICMP, uh, oh, version six of it, version six has four messages, you know. So uh, for, we have those that are used for dynamic uh, address allocation, which we did talk about yesterday, DSDP 6 where they uh, use the RS messages and the RA messages, uh, router solicitation and router advertisement. Now for, um, for echo request and echo reply, we normally use other messages, the NS and the NA messages. Where NS is a uh, neighbor solicitation and the neighbor advertisement. So neighbor solicitation to look for a neighbor, checking end-to-end -end connectivity, and neighbor advertisement is the equivalent. So uh, for neighbor discovery, we have what's called the ND or the NDP, which is neighbor discovery protocol. And these are normally, you know, just used for doing the same thing in IP version six. And so we did talk about RA messages and we get the, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, we send an RS, which uh, routers by default send after every 200 seconds, but a host device can also send an RA message, an RA, RS message to the router. And this router must have been configured with an IP with six address on its interface, okay? So yesterday we talked about, you know, the RA messages carry everything that is needed by the PC, including the prefix, the prefix line, the DNS address, domain names, so on and so forth. And we did talk about, if you remember my parable of the uh, uh, three young men who are in school and the uh, one of them from a rich family, one of them from a poor family, and one from a middle to do family. And they use something called Slack, which is stateless address auto configuration. Now, talking about ping and trace route, we have already seen ping, you know, basically used for testing uh, reachability of the device. You can ping an IP version 4 or IPv6 address. That is something you need to know. A ping does not change. We don't have ping for IPv4 and ping IPv6. We use the same command. The only thing that changes is the IP. One is version 4 and the other one is version 6. All right. Now, you can still ping a loopback IP. And we did talk about loopback IP addresses for IPv4, which is 127.0.0.1. Now IPv6 also has a loopback address, which is double colon one. And we talked about yesterday that double colon actually is used to represent contiguous or continuous zeros. And so uh, we can compress all those zeros with a one here. And this is the IPv6 um, uh, loopback address. That is IPv6 loopback address. And the loopback addresses, when you ping them, when you ping them, it's not that you're pinging any specific device. You're actually test pinging your own device and you're pinging the same device you're pinging from and you're just testing if the TCP IP protocol is operational on your host, meaning if the IP address is configured well, so on and so forth. You can as well ping a default gateway to check if your router is reachable. If the router uh, uh, that you are connected to is reachable in your network, you can always, you know, send ping by sending the echo request to the router interface and you get echo, echo replies back to your PC to test if the default gateway is well configured. You can still ping a remote host like I just did ping a remote host. I was pinging the Facebook servers. I pinged the Cisco servers, which are very far away. They are in, I don't even know exactly where they are, but ping can be used to send packets remotely. Obviously, some networks don't accept ping messages and those are configured within the firewall to prevent that. 
Now we have this sister of ping called trace route or trace art. Okay. And um, the two words are actually the same. Uh, they are the same command, only that one is used on uh, the command prompt and one is used within the router. So trace route is the one you use within your router, but trace art is used within a PC. So for example, if I get my, uh, I want to trace uh, the network at cisco.com servers, so I'll just do trace art and I type here cisco.com. Uh, trace art, cisco.com, and I'm going to press enter. And as this is happening, I need to explain something to you guys. When you use ping, the device sends an echo request to that destination device, and you get an echo reply from that device. It doesn't tell you which devices are along the way. Along the way, towards your destination device, ping does not tell you that. Now, Tracert is amazing. Why? Because Tracert, Tracert tells you which are some of the devices that are found along the way. All right. What are some of the what are some of the devices that are along the way? So what Tracert does is that Tracert sends the first echo request. It sends it to the your first router. Which is your default gateway. So Tracer send the an echo request to your default gateway and you get a feedback. Okay. Okay. Then when you get a reply from your first router, then Tracer sends the next echo request by incrementing the TTL value. The next echo request will be sent to the device after your router. The router after your router, you get a feedback. Then it sent to the third device along the way and it gets feedback. The fourth device along the way towards the destination and it brings a reply. The next device, the fourth, the fifth, and keeps on getting feedback as it increases the TTL value. Okay. So until it will send it to the last device, which is the destination device that you could have pinged. And so Tracer actually traces the path towards the destination. It traces the path towards the destination. Okay, and that is very, very important. And when trace that will be done, it's going to tell us that trace is complete. Trace is complete. So you can see about 20 devices along our way and still moving. 21, you've reached 21. If you're not able to see, you can see we've reached 22 now, and it's moving 23. Uh, to 23 and 24 is there. 25. These are routers along the way as we turn towards the Cisco.com servers. Okay. Now, you one thing that has happened, which is very good, is we can see a request timed out. Now, with Tracert, one of the devices along the way might be having a problem, and it will time out, but that, uh, that will not prevent the Tracert from working. Okay? One of the devices might be having an issue, and that will not prevent uh, the device from happening. So clearly, you can see our trace is now complete, and we have about 28 devices to, to reach. And there might be some familiar uh, words here, like we have a device which is in Los Angeles here, Los Angeles. We have uh, Dallas still in the US and Dallas 3 is still in the US. All right. We have, of course, the, an uplink, Cisco.com device there. There's a Cisco.com devices and all of them are here. So look at my default gateway, it's there. Then there's a router after my default gateway. This should be my service provider's uh, IP is there. Then it keeps on moving. It keeps on moving to one device and back, to the next device and back, until it will go all the way to reach the last 28th device. And this is a device that is in the US, okay? This is in San Jose, uh, in California. 
So this is tracer, very important for tracing the path and checking which device can be faulty along the way. So very, very uh, interesting stuff there for tracer. Right, remember in a router, you will use the, com the command trace route. You use the command trace route to basically tracing the path from uh, source to the destination. OK, so that is the end of uh, the, this uh, short module. On ICMP. Short module on uh, ICMP. And. Uh, uh, we can now, you know, move to uh, the next thing. And uh, talk about. 